Okay, uh, in this screencast we're going to learn how geometry and calculus can partner up to figure out how to calculate the volumes of rotated solids. Here's the geometry part. I hope you all remember that when you have a cylinder, we can calculate the volume of that cylinder if we know the radius and the height. The volume is just the area of the base which is pi r squared times the height, which is h. That's the basic concept behind finding the volume of a rotated solid. And it doesn't matter if the cylinder is going horizontally or vertically. It's still going to be pi r squared h. So where does the calculus come in? Well, let's say that I've got some function that's doing that. We'll call it y equals f of x. And I want to rotate it around the x-axis here. OK, so that means it's going to spin around the x-axis and create a solid. And so roughly it's going to look like that. And notice that if I broke this down into little disks that were stacked next to each other, going from left to right, the radius of each disk would vary depending on what my y value was. So here's the radius of this disk. And the thickness of the disk, instead of being h, is going to be dx, because the little tiny change in horizontal distance. So the volume of one disk on this figure is going to be pi times the radius squared, which in this case is y, times the height, which in this case is dx. And that'll be the volume of one disk, which we'll call dv. Let's look at a couple of examples. OK, this problem says to calculate the volume of the solid formed by rotating the region bounded by y equals the cube root of x, y equals 0, which is the x-axis, and x equals 8. So the cube root of x is going to go from 0, 0 through 1, 1, and 8, comma 2. So it's going like this. And x equals 8 is our boundary, so we're going to stop right there. And if I rotate it around the x-axis, then we're going to get this figure here. It's going to look kind of like a bullet or a piece of a cucumber, like we did in class. OK, so I'm going to pick a random point x, y. On that point, I'm going to draw my disk. So there's my radius, and that equals y. So the volume of my disk is pi y squared, and the height of the cylinder is dx. Now, since it's dx, that means I need to write y squared in terms of x. Well, y to the first is the cube root of x. So y squared is going to be x to the 2 thirds. OK, so that's the volume of one disk. How am I going to get the volume of the whole solid? Well, we're going to sum up an infinite number of disks starting at 0 and stopping at 8. And the calculus function that does that for us is the integral. So my volume is going to equal pi times the integral from 0 to 8 of x to the 2 thirds dx. And this becomes a pretty simple problem. That's going to be pi, and we're going to do 3 fifths x to the 5 thirds 
from 0 to 8, which is equal to 3 pi over 5 times 8 to the 5 thirds minus 0. And the cube root of 8 is 2. 2 to the fifth is 32. 32 times 3 is 96. And our final answer is 96 pi over 5, and that's cubic units. OK, that was rotated around the x-axis. I can also rotate something around the y-axis. So let's look at this problem. We've got y equals x squared. I'll go back to blue. We'll go y equals x squared. So it's this right here. And we're going to do the volume of the solid rotated around the y-axis bounded by the line y equals 9, x equals 0, which is the y-axis, and y equals x squared. So it's this area in here. When I rotate that around, it's going to look like this. OK, so I'll pick my random point x comma y, and that's where I'll draw my representative disk. And notice that this time my thickness of my disk is not dx, it's now dy, which means that everything is going to have to be written in terms of y. My radius is not y. My radius is now x. So the volume of one disk is going to be pi x squared dy. And this worked out pretty simply because x squared is y, so I can just replace that x squared with a y. If it wasn't that simple, I would have to actually solve this equation for x in terms of y. OK, so that's the volume of one disk. What are our limits going to be? How many disks are we adding up? Well, we're starting at the bottom here, and we're stacking them one on top of the other. And we're going to stop when we get up to 9. So our actual volume of the solid is going to be pi times the integral from 0 to 9. Notice I'm using y values, not x values, of y dy, which equals pi times y squared over 2 from 0 to 9, which equals pi times 81 over 2 minus 0. So our final answer is 81 pi over 2 units cubed. When you do these problems, I want you to find the volume of a disk first. That will turn into your integrand. And that once you've done that, everything else is pretty easy. All right, good luck.